Hey, Steve here. Hopefully you can see me and hear me okay. Uh, go ahead and say hello in the chat. Let me see where you're from and let me know that you can see me and hear me okay, all right? So welcome to a Monday Guitar Motivation. Uh, I haven't been here for a few weeks. The summer has been crazy busy, but here we are. So today what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be talking a little bit about legato practice. Marty is here, how you doing, Marty? Uh, Patrick is here from Cleveland, Ohio, how you doing? And, uh, oh, here we go. Carl is here, Grant is here, Aaron is here, Tally is here, Jason is here, very nice. Mike Rudolph is here from New York, good to see you, Mike. So again, thank you everybody, Jacob, Ronald, uh, Jeff Jarvis is here. How you doing, bud? Cool. All right. Well, we got lots of people already here uh, from all over social media. So thank you, everybody, for being here. This is great. And uh, again, let me know if you can hear me okay, you see me okay. Looks like we're doing good. Tracy is here. Bo Simplistic is here. Farnham is here. Carlos is here from Puerto Rico. How you doing, bud? Uh, Germany. Jason's here from Germany. Very cool. KB from Argentina. Jesse from Texas, very cool. Again, thank you everybody. We already have a lot of people here. So thank you everybody. It's nice to see you. Um, I'm glad you can hang out with me. Oh, Austin is here. How you doing, buddy? So anyway, let's go ahead and get started. So what we're gonna talk about today are uh, some legato techniques that you can practice, all right? So whether or not you're, uh, you may be doing this just as a practice warm up or whether you're doing it as an actual technique exercise, I just wanna give you a couple of different things uh, to think about. All right. So first thing we're going to do here is I'm um, now we're going to be talking primarily about pull-offs, but it's pretty tough to talk about pull-offs without also talking about hammer-ons. Okay. So what we're going to do here is we're going to start off by just making things as basic as possible. And then we're going to build on there. Now, very simply, what is a pull-off? Well, a pull-off is when you play a note that's higher than another note, you play that note. Thank you so much, everybody. So for instance, right here, what I'm doing is I'm going to the uh, middle finger on the sixth fret of the second string and my first finger on the fifth fret of the second string. I would play this note. And then what I would do is I would take that finger and I'm going to actually kind of flick that string. I'm not just picking the, the finger up, but I'm actually making it kind of look like the guitar pick and that it kind of flicks like that. Yeah, and for those of you that are, um, part of the Guitar Zoom community, I'll be going live tonight. I just saw somebody mention that. I'll be going live tonight at 7 p.m. Central, and we're gonna continue on with our home recording discussions. So if you are part of the Guitar Zoom community, I will see you again tonight at 7 p.m. If you're on stevestein.com, I'll be answering all your personal questions at um, 1 p.m. today. So I'll be going live on stevestein.com, and we'll be doing one-on-ones in there. So if you're, if you're in there, We'll be doing that. Okay. All right. Cool. Thank you so much, everybody. All right. So with that pull off, I'm playing, you'll notice both my fingers are down. I'm playing this six and then I'm flicking that string to create the five. So I'm not just lifting it up like that. I want to get a little more volume off of that, a little more power. So I want to do that. Okay. Now a hammer on is just the opposite. A hammer on, I'd be on the five and I'd be hitting onto the sixth. And again, not just setting the finger down, but actually kind of smacking it down. And a pull off. Now, if you do them both together, you get what's called a trill. So those are the three main styles of legato that we have, our hammer-ons, pull-offs, and then trills are a combination of the two. So today what I wanna do is I wanna focus a little bit on just doing some pull-offs to try and get you going a little bit. So one thing that you can do here is you could simply do a hammer-on pull-off back and forth, uh, which is a trill, you could do that. You know, you might just wake up in the morning and or after work or whatever, grab your guitar and you know, start doing some stuff like that. And one thing you could look at is uh, if, if you jump on YouTube or whatever, you can look up what's called the 20 second exercise and you're gonna find me on there. Hey, Don. Uh, David says, when trying to do pull-offs, I sometimes catch the string below. Okay, it's a great question, David. So what David's saying is when he's doing, let's say we're on that second string, and you start doing a, a pull-off or a trill or whatever it might be, and the first string wants to start making noise, what you'll notice that I do is when I start doing this, I'm grabbing that first string. Now, with this hand, and I'm also touching the strings above because if the, if the entire guitar starts vibrating a bit, okay, then I'm gonna start getting a bunch of noise, so I'm keeping all the strings quiet. 
Now, we're going to talk a little bit more about this, David, as we keep going. So what you can do as well, even if you don't want to grab onto the guitar because maybe you're involved in you know, changing your volume or something else is coming up or something like that, what you can do is use maybe the, the flesh of your first finger to, try, to, to touch that first string and you'll purposely deaden it. And now it won't make noise. Okay, and I talk about this in a number of different videos, but there's a technique that, that I use called deadening. Let me explain that to you a little bit. So let's say we were playing a scale, whatever scale it might be. So I'm on the sixth string, and this is, this is kind of deviating a bit, but David has a great uh, question about this. So if I was on the sixth string and I'm playing something, what's happening is, for me, generally it's my first finger, but other fingers can, can work in tandem to make this functional. So what happens is, if I'm on the sixth string, my first finger is intentionally touching the other five strings and deadening those strings. So as I'm playing, now I might get a harmonic or something, but those harmonics aren't going to ring out if I'm not hitting those strings. So as I play this sixth string, this finger is touching those other five strings and it's deadening those. Okay, so it keeps everything quiet as I play. If I move to the fifth string, I'm doing exactly the same thing. I'm deadening those, those other strings below me with my first finger or maybe another finger or whatever it might be. But the big thing that happens now is the tip of my index finger starts touching the sixth string. So the sixth string, again, other than maybe a harmonic or something, the sixth string is gonna be dead, so it's not gonna make noise. So as I'm playing the fifth string, whether it's a hammer on or a pull off or picking them or whatever, this finger is killing that sixth string, and then the rest of that finger is deadening all the notes below it. Now as I move to the fourth string, again, the same thing's happening. I'm deadening all the notes below that by touching it. I'm deadening the fifth string by touching it with the tip of my index finger, but the sixth string is now exposed which is where this hand comes in and starts deadening that sixth string. Now, I'm not, I'm not palm muting it, I'm actually deadening that. And as I keep moving down, okay, I have less and less to deaden with this index finger and more and more to deaden with my other hand, with my picking hand, you see? So as I keep moving down, they're working in conjunction with each other as I move. This hand starts having more responsibility as I get to the thinner strings. As I'm up here, this hand has more responsibility of deadening those strings. So think about that when we're doing these legato techniques, whether we're doing, again, hammer-ons or pull-offs, it doesn't make any difference. So if I'm doing those on the second string, like I'm doing right here uh, at the beginning of our thing here, you see, I can deaden all those top strings here, and then the bottom string there, and then the, the string right above me with the tip of my index finger. Okay? So now to start developing this legato thing, we're gonna talk about different finger combinations. A really great one that you can do just to kind of get started is that 20 second exercise, which again, if you jump on YouTube, you can look it up, see what I'm talking about. But that's just a great overall general exercise that you can do. If you wanna dial this in a little bit more, here's a great little exercise that you can do. You can start on any fret that you want. I'm just gonna start on the fifth fret. And what I'm gonna do is a series of pull-offs. <laughs> And see, what I'm doing there is not only doing the art of the pull-off on each string, picking and then doing a pull-off, but I'm also deadening all those strings as I go because it's not just the technique, it's the effectiveness of the technique. And, and what I always tell students is, you know, a lot of times when you're playing, the, the, the element that you're, you're playing is like the rock star, right? That's the thing everybody's focusing on. But your real job is to keep everything else behind the scenes quiet as much as you possibly can. That's what makes things sound, for lack of a better term, professional, is your ability of being able to play that thing and then keep everything else silent as you do. Because if all that stuff starts making noise, it's gonna sound less than professional, right? Again, for lack of a better word. So as I do this, I'm not just focusing on how fast I can do it, I'm focusing on controlling and cleaning up all the strings around it as I do this. So when you first start, don't worry about how fast you're doing it, worry about how clean it sounds. And this is the second thing we need to talk about with this, not only deadening the strings and controlling that, but moving. So for instance, when I move from the sixth string to the fifth string, 
I do that pull off, both fingers are on there. And at some point before I pick, I need to get that middle finger ready to go on the fifth string. And then right behind it, I need to get that first finger prepared for the pull off. Uh, Doug says, is there any equipment that can be purchased to help deaden unwanted noise or is it a matter of physically muting the strings? It's a matter of physically muting the strings. You can use things like, um, you know, they make those, those uh, things that keep your, your strings quiet and things like that, which are great when you're recording and stuff, but, you know, then you got to move it out of the way when you play chords and things. And like if I was performing live, I certainly wouldn't use something like that. Um, you can buy noise gates and things like that, but that's all a little bit different. That's not, none of those things are going to take the place of learning how to be articulate and deaden the strings with your, with your hands. They're an addition to that can benefit in maybe similar ways, but then in different ways as well. Um, you know, so sometimes when I'm recording, I don't know if I got one with me here, but yeah, I do. So sometimes when I'm recording, I'll use like these things here which you clamp on the guitar and then it keeps it quiet. So it's not making noise. So I get a really good take when I'm recording, but you know, I wouldn't use that when I'm just playing, you know, when I'm just playing, I don't have anything on there. So if, as you're soloing, you know, you, you need to learn how to control those strings whenever you're doing anything. So what you're playing is being highlighted. And what you're not playing, which are all those other strings, are constantly being monitored and controlled and deadened so they're not making noise. Okay? So, so as I'm doing this, then that's the next thing I'm thinking about. First thing I'm thinking about deadening those strings. Second thing I'm thinking about the pull-off itself, right? And the third thing I'm thinking about is the transition from one string to the next. Like when I go there, I don't want you to hear the sixth string. I don't want that sound. So I've got to make that shift from the sixth string vibrating to the fifth string vibrating. And then I've got to get my finger ready behind that to be able to. So as you're practicing these things, don't just think about how fast it is. Think about how it sounds. Okay? And then you move up and you do it again. But you go this direction this time. And see, you can just practice something like that, again, learning how to control, not just the legato part itself of the pull-off, but learning how to control all those strings. You could start at one or three or five, it doesn't make any difference, and it doesn't matter how far up you go. And at any time, you can turn around. And you might just choose two strings and just... You see, and just practice those things. Uh, yeah, so that's that's what these are. Yeah, and and I mean, like I said, what, what's great about these is, let's say you're 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 recording a section in the studio, and um, you know, sometimes what you'll see, there's a great video of John Petrucci in the studio, and somebody's like holding his strings as he's playing to keep them quiet. Because again, when you're in the studio, you want the best of of everything that you're doing, and you might be paying for the time that you're in there. So that's where something like this becomes really handy is you're able to deaden those strings, you know, if you're doing some sort of a sequence and, you know, or whatever it might be, and you want those strings deadened, but, you know, again, live, it, it isn't necessarily going to work the same way. So just knowing that that's there, okay? So uh, Doug says deliberately in slowing down and listening. That's exactly what this is all about. So that's the first thing that you can do. And you can, like I said, you could just take one string and pick it, or you can do a hammer on pull off, which is a, a trill. Work on deadening those. So our first little movement exercise is just simply taking this pull off and moving this direction. Now you could do the same thing with a hammer on if you wanted to. Right? You could just do something like that. I used to, and I don't, <laughs> I don't think you need to do this, but when I was younger, I used to have this chart on my wall of all of these different finger combinations that I would practice. 
And over the years, what I've realized that I do and I, I teach is the essential things. Like you think about your, your four fingers and how you need to be able to utilize all four fingers. And so you try and work on various combinations to develop those. So my point is, I don't, you don't necessarily need to make like 583 different exercises that you do every day. If you want to, that's fine. But focus on understanding what you're really trying to do here is, is you're trying to learn how to do a technique with a group of fingers and you're trying to control all the strings as you execute that technique. That's kind of what you're doing, okay? So the next thing I would do then is I would move to my middle finger. And do the same thing, same idea, developing that, okay? And then when you get done with that, you could go to your pinky. develop that as well, okay? So that's the first group of things I wanna give you today. The next thing I wanna give you is simply staying in one spot uh, to begin with. And what we're gonna do is start using two, uh, two different groups of pull-offs, which is three fingers. So now what we're gonna do is that. Instead of doing just two to one, we're gonna do three to one. So again, not just how fast you can go, but are the pull-offs successful? Do they sound right? Do they sound clean? Do they sound even, right? So if you keep going, and again, you can use all six strings like we've been doing. You might start here, but you don't have to use all those six strings. You might just use one string. or two strings. Now what happens is, because we're using two groups of, of, of fingers, three to two and then two to one, the next thing we start trying to think about a little bit here is the timing. Like if I'm going You see, I want to start thinking about how that timing works. So I've got my volume that I'm working on. So instead of getting, you know, something like that, unless it was intended, you really start trying to dial in. That, and then you can decide, you know, if you want to use a bunch of different strings going up and down, that's perfectly fine. Whatever it is that works for you. Okay, so that gives us the last one then, which would be all four fingers. We're going. And you think about the deadening of the strings, the control of the strings, the pull-offs, the volume, the, you know, the, 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 the rhythm. There's a lot going on there that we might not be thinking about when we're just trying to go fast. And again, there's nothing wrong with going fast. I mean, if that's if you're working on something and that's the effect that you're looking for, I think that's that's wonderful. But the point of technique sometimes is to slow it all down and then figure out what might be going wrong. Like, is there a certain finger in there that's not working very well for you and it's causing the other ones to have issues? Because we know that once we get to these, these two fingers right here, that's where we tend to have a lot of problems with whatever it is we're doing. And so we wanna make sure that we're always developing these fingers. Which brings me to the next thing. You don't just have to do a two finger combination of these. You could do a two finger combination of these. Or these, right? You could go. You know, and use that as a finger combination. Again, my point is, I don't want you to stress out and feel like you have to do 50 different legato exercises every day. Just find the ones that seem like they work best for you and that you probably need the most and maybe work on those. Uh, Martin says, is this where a metronome would help? Absolutely, you could use, I wouldn't use a metronome in the beginning until I've dialed it in, you know, dial in the, the feel and the cleanliness and all this kind of stuff. Once I've got all that working, that might be a perfect time to bring in a metronome, okay? So I wanna end with one other thing to give you though. And it's gonna go into using three note per string patterns, which is what I use a lot. And a lot of times when you're playing faster, that's what you're working with. So what I want you to think about a little bit here is this, we're gonna to go to the seventh fret and the fifth fret and the fourth fret, okay, of the third string. So I'm doing seven, five, four, which means I'm using my pinky, my middle and my first. And then I'm gonna to go to the fourth string and do exactly the same thing. 
Now you'll notice that sometimes I use a little bit of a palm mute on those thicker strings, which gives it kind of a percussive effect, even though I'm just doing pull-offs. It sounds kind of cool. You don't have to do that, just an idea. But that's a really great exercise to start working on, and it's very real world because when you're playing scales a lot of times, you know, when you're playing a three note per string pattern, if you know what that is. Hey, Brian, um, you'll be using ideas like this. So again, you could do this as a, a hammer on exercise. Or pull off exercise. But that's a really nice way of just practicing that over and over and over. And you could go anywhere on the fretboard, okay? So that's using one, two, and four. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move up and I'm gonna play five, seven, and nine. So now I'm using one, two, and four again, but I'm using what's called a three note per string uh, spread fingering. So I'm playing five, seven, and nine. I was playing four, five, seven before, now I'm playing five, seven, nine. So there's a little bit more space right here, right? So I'm doing the same thing. Right now, what am I using for effects? I've just got, a, again, one of the presets I always use on my Kemper and some delay and reverb on there. Oh, sorry. So you could go from this and you'll notice the great thing about that is you're using the pinky the whole time to develop one, two, and four this whole time. Now what I'll do is, again, you could do this anywhere you want, but what I could do is drop down, here's my four, five, and seven that I was using, right? Well, I'm gonna move down again and use two, four, and five, and when I do that, now I'm using my first finger, my third finger, and my pinky. And something like that, and again, you could use those as hammer-ons or whatever you want, but an exercise like that is really great for developing strength in your fingers, dexterity in your fingers, and you're doing it in a practical sense of something that, from a scale perspective, you'd really use. If you're playing pentatonics, obviously this is a little bit different, right? But if you're doing anything that's diatonic, these are the three main shapes that we use when we play diatonic scales, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do scales, okay? So with this sort of thing, I'm doing, uh, you know, two, four, five, and then four, five, seven, and then five, seven, nine. And again, you could do this anywhere you want. I'm just, just showing you this, but so you could do those as hammer-ons. <laughs> And again, all the time controlling those other strings, right? Deadening them as needed, trying to work on the the, uh, the technique of it, the, the speed of it, the volume of it. So remember, it doesn't have to just be fast. You want to check it even at slower speeds. So that's kind of a fun thing that you can do as well. So, and even going back to something as basic as just talking about pentatonic scales, you might just play through your pentatonic scale doing pull-offs. And you can go back, maybe doing hammer-ons. And then sometimes what I, I use with show students how to do is just taking like that pull-off idea. And just developing little ideas with that, just re repetition of doing certain strings or whatever it might be. Uh, what are the frets and fingers used again? Well, I, again, I, if I was using one, two, four, it could be, you know, I was using fourth fret, fifth fret, and seventh fret. Again, you're going to be able to watch this again, watch the replay on wherever you are right now. As soon as I get done, it'll be posted. But um, the, the point isn't the frets. The point is the fingers. So if I was using one, two, and four for fingers, 
I could go to you know six, seven, nine, or eight, nine, eleven, or eleven, twelve, fourteen, or wherever you want, right? And then the next shape that you have would be your first finger, third finger, and pinky, right? Which would be like four, six, seven, or nine, eleven, twelve, or wherever you want to go. And then the third shape is the spread fingering, which for me, my spread fingering is done with my my first, my middle, and my pinky. Some of you might use your third finger, but so for me, if I was playing, for instance, seven, nine, and eleven sorry, right here, I'd be using my first, my middle, and my pinky on seven, nine, and 11. All I did here in our example was I tied them together logistically with a scale. So I played two, four, five, which use this, and then four, five, seven, which would use this, and then five, seven, nine, which would use this, okay? Again, I'm using my middle finger. Some of you might use your third finger instead to do five, seven, and nine, but for me, it it makes more sense with my middle finger. But again, whatever works for you. So this will get posted if you're watching it on YouTube or Facebook or whatever. As soon as we're done, it'll stay posted up there and you can watch this and you can practice this this week and uh, get going with some new techniques, all right? So thank you everybody for joining me. Hopefully this helps you a little bit, gives you some ideas of some things that you can practice. Stay positive, keep practicing. If you're looking for any guitar stuff, you can always head over to guitarzoom.com and see uh, the guitar courses we offer and the membership and all that kind of stuff, all right? So. Uh, keep practicing and keep doing what you're doing. And thank you again. Thank you so much for